Um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Or good evening, depending on where you are, I guess. <laughs> so we will um, uh, not have Dr. Marjorie on this afternoon. And so the three of us will introduce ourselves to you. I'm Dr. Carolyn Rowley, um, Executive Director at Cayenne Wellness Center um, out in California. Dima? Hello, everyone. I'm Dima Hendricks. I'm in the Boston area. Um, I'm the project manager for the Charisma Study, and I do all, do a lot of things. <laughs> um, in addition to that, I am the executive director of Through the Paint, Inc. Heather? Hi, everyone. My name is Heather Avant, and um, I am uh, the co-chair of this wonderful, wonderful initiative, I guess. Um, but I, I work in lots of spaces and I'm just really, really happy uh, to be here as an advocate, but as a patient and as a friend with you all today. Thank you. So what we're going to do, everyone, we're going to do our mindful breathing, and then we're going to finish up with the toolkit uh, that was introduced. Um, couple of uh, Sundays ago. Yes. And so um, it's always a good time to just, now that you're present with us, to be able to just be mindful and be present with this in breathing. So we're going to get started by, um, if you're sitting, just have your feet firmly planted on the ground, and or you might be laying down because you're fatigued. And that's okay too. You can still get nice deep breaths in as well. So uh, what I'd like for you to do is just get um, comfortable and try to sit a little bit up um, erect a little bit. Have your chin not all the way down yet, not farther back. And why don't we get started? So just be mindful of your breathing at the moment. And um, what we're going to wind up doing is breathing in for a count of um, two, holding it for a count of two, and then uh, releasing it for a count of four. So if you can do that with me, that'll be great. So here we go. And hold. And release. And breathe in. Hold and release. Again. Hold the two. And if you feel comfortable, you can keep your eyes closed. So at this time, as we do the and and if you can the last four hands and have them face up for this At this time, if you can be mindful of your person, that's sometimes when you have a lot of Pay attention to your shoulders and when you're breathing in, relax. This time, when your arms are very limp, shoulders relax. Just pay attention to your uh, breathing, your chest, 
if you can pay attention to just uh, your legs, your thighs, and allow them to just be loose. Concentrate on your breathing. Some people might be, those of you might be in pain, so just try to get as much breath into those areas. Hold and breathe out. Again. Hold. And so now we're going to work on, as you're breathing in and out, the ability to just heal and be comfortable with your healing breath. Breathe in. Hold. And out. So anybody who's having pain, whatever that pain is, let's breathe in and direct it to that area. Shift that off and thank you for joining me. I hope you feel just a little bit more relaxed. And um, I share with people that when you direct your breath to a certain area and to get the oxygen there, it really can help, even in the midst of um, pain, being able to fill that space with breath so i hope that was helpful for some of you heather thank you so much dr Rowley, for uh for leading us in that wonderful breath work session i hope that everyone gained something from that i always do um it always and dr Rowley's voice was so calming and soothing it's just it took me there because i know i came in and i was rushing around trying to sit down and set up my my little area and so this was much needed so i'm so appreciative of you so today we're going to uh go over some of the things that we talked about our last session we were talking a lot about um just like our mental health toolkit if Sharonica, you could pull up the slides for us. So last time we went over practice mind, practicing mindfulness and practicing self-care. So today we're going to be doing a deep diving into cultivating gratitude, connecting with others and setting boundaries. So um, I feel like I probably am positioned to do the setting boundaries pretty well. So I will take everyone laughs because they all know me. Uh, I'll take that one. Uh, and uh, Dima and uh, Dr. Raleigh, which one would you like to take? <laughs> um, I could 
If it's okay, Dima, I can do the first one that's appearing now. Absolutely. Go straight ahead. That's okay. Great. All right, everyone. So cultivating gratitude. Um, interesting. When I saw the slide, I, just for myself, I know that throughout the day, not only do I pray for family and friends, I'm always thankful um, for most everything. Um, I'm thankful that I have a 2006 car that keeps on running and I don't have to spend money on buying a new car yet. I'm thankful that um, I'm in my own space. I'm uh, thankful for being in the community. It's where I belong. And I'm thankful for the interactions that I have with um, people in and out, sometimes emergency, sometimes just to talk. Uh, so, but I wanna read this to you and see what we all can do together to cultivate gratitude. So it says, keep a gratitude journal. Each day, write down three things you are grateful for. And I would, um, I wanna expand that. I think you may have heard me talk about um, let prayer change your life. Prayer is very powerful. Becky Tirabasi has a book. And then from that book, I created uh, my own journal. And it's amazing because when you look back and you read, you'd be able to cross off these things that you may have been asking for, or even um, writing down those things that you're thankful for. And so I know sometimes the days get ahead of us, but I really would like you all to consider, if you don't have one already, creating one. And it can be very simple. Uh, that you do in the morning and or that you do in the evening just to write down for that day. And, and the reason why I can say that as long as you're amongst the living, there's something to be grateful for. Um, you know, even if you were in pain and you got your grip on it, uh, that's to be thankful for. Um, you know, um, so full transparency, um, I haven't been in the hospital in almost a year. And I went in on Friday and I just got out uh, an hour before coming on. And I'm thankful, why? Because my doctor loves me and she would never allow anyone to not take care of me well. So I'm very thankful that my experience was right on, um, which helped me to literally get to where I am back home. Very thankful for that. Express gratitude to others by sending a heartfelt note or telling them in person. And um, we should never assume that the person just knows how we feel. And so it's great. And I'm gonna do that with my colleagues Seriously, Dima and Heather, thank you both for being on um, and doing this. We're doing this with each other. Um, and it does take all of us to do this. And that way we don't have to feel um, so heavy that we're carrying um, a load. Not when we can count on one another and we can. Take a moment each day to reflect on the things you appreciate about yourself. Now that one I think is a hard one. I'm sorry. I'm gonna speak for myself because I I don't think about my um, self. It doesn't mean that I don't take care of myself. I do. You guys all know that I'm plant-based and I cook. And so I think what I put in my body is great. But in terms of how do I appreciate myself? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm thankful. And in my thankfulness, I'm aware of my being and just being here, not taking people for granted. 
But I, I'm going to have to ask Heather and Dima. Um, I don't know. I don't really do that. Um, and I'm not even sure how I would do that. Just spend some time appreciating myself because I'm so um, warrior focused. And um, in terms of the, the, um, my responsibilities, I'm pretty much warrior focused and or family focused. And I don't really think about that. Um, do you guys have any examples? Oh, I think that that's a hard one for for everyone. Um, taking a moment to reflect on things that bring that you appreciate about yourself. I think that that's something that we don't do often enough. Um, I know for me, something that I do is, I am, I'm. I think I, I I'm like a lot of warriors when I say this. So um, this is a no judgment space. So I'm going to just put it out there. And I'm guessing that this isn't a secret. But I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Uh, <laughs> I like things just so. Just um, so. I don't like doing. I don't like doing half work. I like doing complete jobs. I like seeing things come to fruition. I'm a very hard worker. But something for me is when I clean my home, mm -hmm. and my entire house is clean. Um, my emails are answered, or at least flagged to be answered. I have a list of to do things to go. My child is fed. My groceries are bought. Um, my laundry is done. I usually am like, yeah, girl. Okay. <laughs> I, I I tend to always say, you did this. Yeah. You know, you may have been having a bad day. You may not have been feeling great. But when you come home, your house smells wonderful. And there is a hot meal on the table for your husband. And your son has his favorite dinner. Um, which is the same thing every single day for the last year. And, <laughs> um, you know, you're just, you've done this. I sometimes look at my home and my little boy, especially when he smiles and I see the today, um, you know, I, we, he's been begging to go to the beach for two years or so. And me and my husband found a weekend to like make it happen. We just were like, we're gonna do this. We have to get this kid to the beach because he's been begging every day for about two years. So, you know, we came to the beach and even though I'm here on the call with you, to see the joy in his eyes this afternoon when he first got to see the sand and the water and the sparkle mm -hmm. in his eyes, I kind of like, I, of course I'm not gonna sit say it to everyone in the world, but I'm going to say it to you all. So I'm going to sound real conceited right now. But I looked at my, I was like, I did this. I got us to the beach. We have warrior con coming up and I have photo shoots up the Wooza and um, I'm traveling to Michigan to take care of my dad and I'm um, going to DC. But I took a weekend to get my little boy to the beach. And I'm like, girl, I'm so proud of you. I certainly did say that when I saw his little eyes get all sparkly and he was like, like, you know, he thought this was the best thing he's ever seen. So I try to look at the little, it's not always one particular moment. It's sometimes it's a bunch of little things that come together just so, yeah. and you're like, God, look at, look at my life. Look at, look at you, look at your grace. Thank you. That actually, so examples help. And so thank you for providing that because I think many of us do those things and um, not label them as, as appreciating ourselves. But thank you, that actually helped because I can check things off and, um, you know, I, uh, so I appreciate that I, um, make meals on Friday and I make 10 different meals, everybody, okay? That's a lot, but I get it done from the beans to the hummus, to the pastas, to the soups, 10 meals that I do in that day. I'm gonna come over and eat. <laughs> and uh, to the asparagus soup, to all of that. So, you know, thank you. I need to appreciate that I do it not just for my health, but my family is getting eating healthy too. Dima, can you chime in? I think that's a hard thing for me to to ch chime in about too sometimes, because as warriors we kind of 
kind of get down on ourselves and want to be um, thinking about the other person. How does this one feel and how how can I appreciate this individual or how can I, for me, how can I appreciate my husband and my children? Um, but what I try to do, I'm sorry, what I try to do is, um, this is one thing I wrote, um, I kind of write down everything that I do, kind of how I have, how we have a resume for our jobs. I kind of have a resume of, or a bullet point of all the accomplishments I made because sometimes I do tend to forget. And sometimes I, I, I hone and kind of harp on the, what I feel are the ne negative aspects about myself. Um, and, I, and I need that, that notebook, I need that piece of paper to say, okay, Dima, you did this this week. You did that this week. Um, even in my um, my daily journal, I kind of like write down the things that I need that I need to do beforehand. And when I check it off, I'm like, okay, I did this, and I appreciate the fact that I even in even in my lack of strength or if I'm tired, you know, I, I'm I'm happy that I accomplished those things. So I, that's what I try to do. Thank you. I think we can move on. Well, actually, before we move on, does anyone want to put something in the chat to let us know um, if they do any of these things, one of these things, and um, how do you do that? Or what does that look like? There is one comment that says, I don't think about myself. I'm not quite sure who that's from. That's from a Facebook user. Um, and it's easy for us to forget about ourselves. I think that that's very, very easy as like as warriors, as we, it is so easy. And I think just as as people, we oftentimes, you know, there's, I mean, we, we're like, oh, it's such a shame to, to put yourself out there and tell everyone what you've done, what you're doing. However, I think to yourself, you could admit when you're a superhero in your own world, expressing gratitude to yourself and saying, girl, you got this, look at you doing Girl, look at you putting your feet on the ground this morning. You you stood out of bed. Some mornings, that's all you can do. That is that is a, a, an anointing some mornings for me. If I'm like, Jesus, look, my feet are on the floor. You did this. And then I move, might move to the couch. But hey, I got up. So I think sometimes we have to even just understand those small moments. Um, I like to express gratitude. I love expressing gratitude to people. I like to buy gifts. It's not how I receive love, but it's how I give love. Um, I love buying gifts. Don't tell me what your favorite something is because you will get it in the mail. And I'm like, ooh, let me, if I see it, I'm like, ooh, let me, this little trinket. My husband's like, could you stop spending all my money buying gifts? I'm like, <laughs> I know, I love it though. I love, to, I love people's joy of getting something so surprisingly in the mail. That is very nice. Oh, well, that was to the next one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was Edda that made that comment. Edda, it's Hi, okay. Edda. Edda, it's okay to boast on yourself, girl. You you are like a trooper. So Absolutely. Pat you yourself on the back. Oh, Don Rochester said, I always tell others thank you or I appreciate you, especially to my staff members. Yeah, me too. I think the word I appreciate you goes a long way with people. I say it too, and I know because I know that there are times when people feel very underappreciated. Yes. So I think that that's powerful. I do too. Well, I am going to turn this over to the next slide. And who's doing the next slide? Ah. Dima. Oh, wow. This is so good. Connecting with others. And, you know, I'm glad I have this one because I practice this today um, and making sure that I schedule some time with my friend. Um, and I know it was a it was a moment where, you know, she was going through something, but we still haven't connected all this week because everything was just so busy. Um, just having someone to pour into you because iron sharpens iron and where two or more are gathered, you know, um, things can happen. Things can move. Someone to, to pray with, someone to laugh with. Laughter it, with someone else is, is meaningful. 
Um, so this this is something that I actually practice today. But I, I implore you to schedule regular activities such as dates, walks, or virtual hangouts with a friend or a loved one. Um, I need to get back in my game and do the dating thing. I need to date date my husband on a regular basis. Making that connection is so valuable and make, letting that other person know that you love them. Um, and also one of my love languages is quality time. And so making that connection with, with my best friend or my husband or my children, it just gives me a boost and really um, helps my, my self-care a, a, a tremendously. Um, Another thing that you can do to connect with others is join a group that aligns with your interests or passions. Um, some may join a church. Some people may join um, a session like this. Um, you may join the consortium where you have like-minded individuals who go through the same thing and we can talk about the same thing, a support group. We support each other um, and so, having those interests and those passions align and just and and just talking about what you're going through in the moment can can be very important and impactful in, in boosting your not only your self-esteem but your your character development as well uh the last one here is practice active listening and engaging in meaningful conversations that deepen your connection this is so important, like just having, it could be, you know, sometimes my friends and I, we have most random conversations and we spill the tea and we key key and just the, the having the moment of key keying and having that girl time. Um, it's such a release because um, there's so many times where I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like Heather too, I'm like really, try to be a perfectionist and really hard on myself, but having the moment to let my hair down and just key key, whether it would be with my best friend or just my husband tells me a joke and just, it, it's so meaningful. Um, and then having those meaningful conversations creates intimacy. Like into me, I see you, you see into um, another person, and when you see the vulnerability and the compassion in, the, in, um, in each other, you build a greater connection. Um, do you guys, do you ladies, have any examples of um, your connections to others and how they've been valuable to you? I always have connections to others. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm always connecting because well, that feeds me um, being with other people. I love it. I'm an extrovert in that way. I mean, I'm also an introvert in some ways where I really need my own space and my own time. But I have a girlfriend, just the one that says schedule days. I have a girlfriend. We speak every single Wednesday at around lunchtime. And um, we have been friends for, I don't know, I hate to put a number on it, but probably 15, 16 years. And I adore this woman. Uh, she's been a mentor to me at times, a sister at times. Um, she's she's the kind of girlfriend who will yell at you and tell you about your stuff. And you're like, oh, I'm offended. And then like, you know, two days later, she's like, girl, you need to stop being offended. You know, I was telling the truth. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I think that having, I look forward to Wednesdays now. I didn't used to. Wednesdays to be like, oh, it's Wednesday. Now I'm like, oh, we get to talk to my girl on Wednesday. She's going to call me. We're going to call She's going to FaceTime. We're going to sit on this phone. We're going to holla about whatever is going on and get all the things and talk about all the things. I told my husband, sometimes he'll come home early on Wednesdays. I'm like, you got to go back out. You can't be in the, in the, in the house for this call because... <laughs> <laughs> this is when it all lays out. This is when your wife just lets it, her hair, lets her hair down. So, but I think it's very important to have those connections. Um, I think for me is something that I really miss is actually the, the intimacy, the, the, the connecting with people um, face to face. I miss that a lot because where I am in Dallas, I don't get that a lot. I'm really by myself in my own little corner. So when I see girlfriends, when we go to convention and I see all of you guys, 
all I ever want to do is hug everyone. And I'm pretty sure people are like, don't touch me. Stop touching me. Like, why do you need another hug? Because it's like, I don't see people. Like, uh, <laughs> other than like Sunday at church and my husband is like, these are people that I like. And so um, I do really crave um, that connection with with face-to-face people. When I see you in a couple of weeks, you better hug me, girl. I'm going to hug you, Dana. I'm going to give all the hugs. <laughs> You're going to be so sick of me. It's okay. <laughs> How about you, Dr. Riley? Um, I think I may have mentioned to you all how important that is for me. And I purposely, back in May, uh, purchased a ticket to see my friends in Wisconsin. Recently, my birthday was June 29th, and my friend, Sheila, just a few days, and she had a gathering at her house. And even though I wanted to be at the beach, I figured I can have a long time beach time anytime. But it was nice to be in the presence of others, and it was fun. And that's what I needed. So I do yearn for that. It's um, been challenging now that we're, um, quote, out of pandemic mode. Um, maybe there will be more in person, but I'm like the rest of you. Um, hugs are very healing and healthy. And they say, if you get eight hugs a day, you're jamming. So there's a scale and about the number of hugs and how it makes you feel. So, um, Everybody, you need to let um, Heather hug you at the convention, okay? I mean, within reason. <laughs> I know. So, but it makes sense, though, because my little boy, I'm always hugging on him. I'm sure. Yeah. I, Jake, my husband says, well, he's going to get older. I know. I'm like, I know. But I hug that little boy so much, it's not even funny. I'm sure he's so sick of me. I understand. So, yeah, they're very important. And so um, I think we're going to turn this uh, to Heather for the last slide. Oh, okay. Well, everyone, setting boundaries. I think everyone knows that I'm pretty good at this. If you know me as a human, you know that um, I'm all about boundaries. Uh, I had to learn them the hard way. So I didn't, I never learned how to set boundaries as a young person. You know, today we're teaching these young people, young adults, children to say no. But for us coming up, at least my generation born in the 80s, um, uh, late 70s, we and even before, we were taught that girls don't say no, you say yes, ma'am, and you get it done. Or, um, you know, no was not something that was even allowed in my own home as a child. So uh, setting boundaries is so important to your health, to your mental health. Uh, we have learned so much about allowing and what not to allow in your space. So just to review a couple of the points on here, it says, learn to say no when you feel overwhelmed or when commitment doesn't align with your priorities. So I think that there is a respect in saying no. I think that there's no disrespect in saying no. If you are unable to do something, then don't. Um, but I also feel like commitments, if you make a commitment, you should keep it. Um, so I understand that there's kind of two sides to every coin. So for, for instance, I'm here with you all. My, my little boy is out playing on the beach, but I'm here with you all. I would rather be on the beach. But the thing is, is there is an importance in this and there is a commitment that I have given to this because it's important to me. So I'm going to be mindful of that commitment. So whenever I can, I will be here with you all on Sunday evenings, you know. Um, and then, uh, but you have to understand that there's a, there's a there's walking a line, right? How do we walk that line? Uh, create designated times for work. I am very good at this. After after seven o'clock at night, I will not answer a call. Um, I always tease um, Dr. Bailey. I'm sure many of you know who she is. If you don't, you can you can Google it. But um, she is, you know, leader extraordinaire. She will sometimes call me at like 10, 11 o'clock at night. And it comes from her phone, Lakia Bailey. And I won't answer <laughs> And I won't answer because I know it's work related. But if she calls me from a different lumber and it says Kia, <laughs> I'll, I'll answer it because that means she's calling me as a friend. <laughs> there is a very distinguishing line there. And it's and she laughs about it. She thinks it's hilarious. She's like, you think you're setting boundaries. 
But I believe that you have to be able to take time. There is time for your family. There is time for your friends. There is time that you have to say no to other people. Relaxation, personal um, activity. I think this would be personal activities. Um, but the thing is, is you're supposed to create space for yourself to enjoy your life. Um, life is never all about one thing, work. Um, you know, I learned a long time ago, I almost, I was in ICU and I was very sick and I was almost dying. I couldn't breathe. Um, I could barely speak. My boss called me and asked me when I was returning to work. That was my first sign that they don't care <laughs> about you as a human. I'm sitting here trying to breathe and you're asking me when I'm coming back to work. That helped me in that moment. I learned to set a boundary with her and say, no, I will not answer my phone when I'm in a hospital room for you or anyone else. Because right now my goal is to get well. Communicate your boundaries. Okay, so this is another hard part, right? A lot of times we can set boundaries. Oh, yeah, that's how I am. But then we don't tell anyone. That's where the, the fault lies. We have to really tell people. It says assertively. There is a way. And Toronto and I were talking about this just yet yesterday. There is a way to be, was it yesterday? Maybe the day before. I don't know. There is a way to be respectful, but still set boundaries with people. Um, everyone knows that I am the queen of telling people, no, it's not going to work for me, or I can't do it, or I need this, X, Y, and Z today. Um, that's a boundary. That's telling people, this is what you've done for me. This is what you told me you were going to do. So I expect it today. Um, but saying it in a nice way, saying, hi, I'm just sending out a gentle reminder that this is due today. We don't have to be jerks about setting boundaries and, and making people and helping people understand our space, making sure that we re respect our space with our parents. Uh, when I was coming up as a teenager, my mother didn't allow me to close my door. I think this is something that a lot of black people um, had. At least I know I had it in my home. I was not allowed to close my door ever. I didn't close my door the entire 18 years I grew up in her home. Um, and even when I moved back in uh, for a stint after my freshman year of college, she did not let me close my bedroom door. She thought that this is my house. You don't need privacy. And I remember as now I'm thinking, you know, when I go back and I close my door, I'm always the, my, that thought comes back into my head like, oh, wait, should I not be closing? But now I'm like, I'm a married, whole married human with a kid. I'm closing this door. <laughs> but those things still kind of come back. And, it, you know, there were some skewed boundaries there. I think all of those things, though, helped my mind, helped my mindset as to what was appropriate and what wasn't and how I can better go move forward going on, even with my own son. The other day, my six-year-old told me that next time he said, Mommy, you need to knock when you come in the bathroom. And I was like, oh, OK, we're here. Yes, sir. And so I because I'm a mom and I forget. So I put a post-it note on his door that says knock first because it reminds me to respect his boundaries. He's now six years old. He would like privacy. And I'm going to honor that because I think that's important for him as a six-year-old to have uh, to have those. But boundaries go so far. If you want to hear a little bit more about me and my discussion on boundaries, you can always join me. Um, I am actually talking about this at WarriorCon and I'm doing a virtual session as well as in person. It's for the young adults, but um, I implore you if that if you want to hear me and the discussion a little bit more and get a little deeper, you can join me then, but I'm going to let the other ladies uh, kind of chime in here and see about their thoughts. Dr. Rowley, what are your thoughts on boundaries? Um, they're quite necessary. And I share that, um, you know, I'm very tall. I have long arms. So that's for as, lo as long as my arms are, they're outreach. I don't like trauma, drama, chaos, or anything like that enter. So for me, boundaries are, um, I, I, I'm about peace, as everyone knows. I sign it with peace. And I don't like um, trauma, drama, chaos, or anything like that. I, um, so I'm going to share with you how it, it's worked. Um, so two stories, not to get deep, but um, 
my my sister and brother-in-law intervened with my mom, which I didn't think they needed to do that. So I believe in wisdom. So I just wanted to see how this was gonna play out. And it didn't play out so well. And I wound up um, asking permission to get involved, spoke with my mom who um, didn't like what was happening. And I spoke to my sister and uh, brother-in-law and they thanked me for the wisdom because I basically said that your mother is a grown woman and she can make her own mind. She can do things for herself. And so they listened and they, they thanked me and they said, and I said, because you were responding out of emotion, but the wise thing to do always is to look at the situation and respond with wisdom. And so that that's just how I operate. So I shared that with them. And so things are, you know, things are fine. Um, so if you know me, you know that I don't do well, I don't, I don't get involved. I'm like this, I'm very narrow. Things could be happening out here, there. I literally am one of those that says, "What is it? Um, who, what?" I'm not. I'm not. Um, I don't know what's actually happening because I stay very focused. Um, my health is important, so I hadn't been. I haven't been in pain for a long, long time. Um, my um, how I take care of myself is very important. So I set boundaries as it results in not wanting drama. Um, I, I, I don't even think I, um, I, I'm not aligned with that. I don't, ma there's not a magnet for me to do that. And I think that's how I actually set up boundaries just to make sure that when people interact with me, they know what they're going to get. I'm going to listen, I listen well. I'm going to be supportive, but we can't, there won't be any drama. Um, and some people, and that's a whole nother topic, but some people are drawn to that, and, um, but I'm, I'm not, and I don't have any affiliation with that. So for me, boundaries are about that, because I need peace for me to continue to do the things that I do. Dima, what are your thoughts on setting boundaries? And how well do you think you do it? That's, that's a question, I'm curious. I'm horrible at it. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm so transparent. I think I'm horrible at it because I come from a Caribbean. So my mom's from Jamaica and my father is from Nigeria. Those two cultures do not believe in boundaries and boundary. The word boundary is a cuss word to both <laughs> cultures. Um, I'm learning. I even to one of my family members, look, I need boundaries. This is not, I'm not overextending myself to be in this person's life, especially if I'm not, if I feel that I'm not welcomed, there's a boundary. And we haven't spoke since. <laughs> so, um, and the way I love my family, it's, it, it, you know, it could be very hurtful. It, it, it is hurtful that we're not talking the way uh, we're supposed to because, you know, we're family, but I have to, I'm still having a hard time trying to navigate my yeses and my nos. Mm -hmm. um, and you could probably, it's, you could probably tell with all the things that I do, I have a hard time saying no. Um, <laughs> but I'm working on it. And I'm I'm trying to learn how to consolidate. Um, and Jamaicans, we man, we have 15 million jobs. I'm like, you know, I'm a walking advertisement, and I'm, I'm like an episode of Hey Man from A Living Color. I'm aging my. <laughs> hey man, I have 15 jobs. Yes, um, yeah, that's me. That is me, and I'm so I'm learning how to 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 work on that. So this is this is my Achilles heel. Oh, well, I think we, I think we all have them. And I, I can honestly say I, I have been in that boat before where I didn't know how to say no. Um, but I, 
all that help all that helped me to do was to end up in the hospital yeah. or or in pain yep or stressed out uh or constantly worried about what everyone felt or thought about me and who i was as a human i didn't think that was fair uh so i knew that i had to get real and setting boundaries when i say i've set boundaries i set boundaries with everyone in my life there is no one that is not like in the line of fire when it comes mm -hmm. to me setting a boundary. And that's with my parents. There have been times in my life where I've gone, I wanna say three, four months without talking to my dad, six months without talking to my mother. Not because I was being disrespectful, but because there needed to be a clear boundary set. I set the boundary and it was, of course, it was not received well. But what happens with family, and I've noticed, is that because family love each other genuinely, usually there is a love there, especially with parents and setting boundaries, they will come back. You will come back together because they're family and they do love you. But learning how to work around your boundary is hard. My dad had to learn around a very stern boundary. I said, I, you know, one day he was fussing and hollering and hooting. And I said, I will not allow you to talk to me like this. I would love you. I respect you, but this is no longer going to happen because this doesn't do any good for either of us. And I did not speak to him for about three months. And everyone in my family was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're doing that. And this is horrible. But let me tell you, he has never spoken to me in that way again. I love my dad. My dad is like one of my homies. I talk to him every single day, sometimes, sometimes. I'm sure he gets sick of me calling. But I say that to say I had to set a very firm boundary a couple of years back because I didn't like what was going on. And so it is very, it's not always easy, but let me tell you, the benefits far outweigh, outweigh the, um, the struggles or, you know, the, the bad. There is a comment from Dawn. She said, respond with wisdom. That's from Dr. Riley's session. Yes, Dr. Riley's respond with wisdom. That is, there is something there. Um, I came from Bermuda and boundaries is something that I absolutely struggle with. Yes. And I still can relate to the Islander as a woman who grew up catering to others and pleasing others. Yes, it is hard. It is. We were taught to please others, to take care of everyone but ourselves. We are in a new day, people. We're going to learn how to take care of ourselves and say yes to us once in a while and say no to everything else. Um, any last... <laughs> Two amens. I'm doing pretty good. Any last sentiments, ladies, before we say goodbye um, for this week? Well, no, I just I wanted to say, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say I really enjoy this time and I really look forward to doing connecting with you ladies um and gentlemen when he's around. <laughs> um I look I look look forward to this because it actually is very rejuvenating and I hope that we do the same thing for all of the warriors that are watching us as well. This is this has been a good session. Thank you. I I so agree. And um, and you know I love my breath work. So we're going to end with uh, our three breaths, and uh, for you all to enjoy the rest of your um, afternoon evening and. Um, and again, I said this at the beginning, that if you're having um, pain or achiness, um, you know, the spirometer really helps to um, try to get that breath right into those areas. And it really does help. So I encourage you um, after this one to get out that spirometer. And even if you don't have one, you know how the spirometer works in terms of breath. So practice that. So here we go. We're going to do our three breaths together, our community breaths. So we'll um, do our uh, in two, hold two, and out four three times. Here we go. Breathe in. Hold. And out. Breathe in. Hold and out. Last breath, breathe in. Hold and take it all of it out. Breathe in. 
And everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm going to mute myself since my puppies are getting excited. But thank you all. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Um, and I hope that many of you, if you can, join us in person um, in Houston or online at WarriorCon 2023. Have a wonderful Sunday. Good night, everyone. It's time for the Warriors Convention, and registration is open. Warriors, caregivers, and community, we can't wait to see you all at the 10th Annual Warriors Convention, where we're celebrating 10 years and taking over Houston in partnership with the Houston Collaborative and all of our Texas partners at the JW Marriott by the Galleria. Join us for education, conversation, and networking while building relationships and partnerships. There's something for everyone. It's a family event. So I'm calling all of our 55 plus warriors. Please join us for the golden experience made just for you. Kings and queens, get your tickets today to the Royal Ball. It's a hybrid event and you can choose your experience. Go to sicklecellconvention.org now because we want to see you there.